Prepare yourself. The opinions of the host and guests on the show are exclusively just that. Opinions. That means that they shouldn't be the cause of your state of being offended. Why does everybody get so butthurt? Okay, let's go. Ready, go! Welcome to And God Created Woman, where the arguments are necessary for the best makeup sex of your life. Unless you're single, and then we suggest you just go fuck yourself. All right, guys, and God Created Woman podcast. We're back. It's been a while. Uh, going a different fun route today. The last couple of shows I've had on some awesome people. We've been talking about male, female energy and all this kind of good stuff. That if you like that kind of stuff, join in. But sometimes I like the perverseness. I like the primal stuff that brings back in uh, what I started this podcast for in the first place, which was talking about sex. Because we love to talk about it, hate to talk about it, f- afraid to talk about it. And um, it's, it's just a topic that I can't get a lot of real people to rawly talk about and i've had on doctors we've had on psychologists but uh today's guests are going to be friggin' awesome if you're listening great if you're watching even better um vibe with mommy <laughs> you heard that correctly from only fans you got to onlyfans.com slash vibe with mommy i've got molly and cody joining today and we're going to talk about something uh taboo fantasies we're going to talk about stuff that a lot of people are just terrified to talk about um, and we're going to have some fucking fun. So number one, thanks you two for joining me today. I really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time out of your schedule with the stripper pole in the background to have a conversation. <laughs> thanks for having us. We're, we're very excited to be here. Um, this is something that I enjoy talking about and getting out there in the world. I'm glad you guys talked about this. I, I, I don't know. I think it was on, you have an, had to be TikTok. I think it was on TikTok, and TikTok always makes suggestions for something. And I'm swiping stuff, and I make no qualms or claims about it. I don't, I don't come across somebody's stuff and be like, "Oh, it was totally accident. I looked at this." No, I'm probably searching for shit. So I come across your stuff, and you know, you're you're a really good looking woman, and I'm looking at this stuff, and you. It was a video you did that um, a couple days ago. You were like, "Hey, we're all freaks. We're all this," and. I was like, oh, this is, okay, she's got a, uh, I thought you were fitness, and then you were giving some kind of empowering stuff until I clicked on your link, and I went, oh, fuck, I need to have this brought on a podcast after seeing it. So, like, I want to talk about this. Number one, give everybody a 360-degree view of, like, who you guys are and what you do, and we're just going to talk about the taboo shit that everybody's afraid to talk about. Cool, cool. So I'll, I'll start. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm Molly, also, you know, aka Mommy. I um, I make adult content online. I am like a, you know, we make just content in general. So, you know, Instagram, TikTok, but our main focus is adult content because that was that is what brings in the money. And we do focus on a dynamic where I am the older woman and he is the younger man. So I go by stepmommy a lot of the time or mommy, and he's kind of like a my sweet boy. And we and we do a lot of power dynamics where, you know, I'm very much in control of the situation and we, we hit a lot of different controversial subjects in our content and we really enjoy it because our relationship was kind of, we, we kind of naturally fell into this dynamic, which is I'm mommy and he's my sweet boy. And he's like my, I'm the stepmom, he's my stepson. And yeah. it just, and now we get to make money doing it. So, and, and it works for us online. So that's a little bit about me. And I've been doing this for about like two years now. So no, it's fantastic. Cody, go ahead. I want to hear about you. Uh, well, basically, I've kind of, I've, I, past five, six years, I like grew up fixing and repairing like Japanese sports cars and making that my own hustle. And I just absolutely hated working for people. And I'm a little too autistic to like actually listen to someone for longer than three months. So that actually lined up with Molly, where me and her kind of work. It's weird. Like that actually lines up with porn star mentality work ethics and it turns out like we have the same we know how to deal with people we know how to talk to people we know how to operate the same way and then add that plus i've been um getting into content creation for a long time and then i kind of met molly and she there was a a gap there a gape there where (laughs) where (laughs) yeah where yeah i mean i just I started working with her and we just kind of once I found out you had a big, yeah. you had a big old 
uh, personality. Big personality. Then no, he's well. got a huge cock. Don't fucking. <laughs> why are you? Why are you mincing words on that one? The guy's packing. He has a big personality, and he's more than just a dick. But it's huge and it's beautiful. And I was like, immediately, as soon as like we hooked up, I was like, fuck yeah. I'm like, first of all, yeah, I think she amazing. saw dollar signs. Yeah, I saw dollar signs <laughs> like raining off that penis. And I was like, yeah, this, it's not not only just long, it's like really thick, it's, which I really Yeah, I, it's, I'm, I'm jealous, dude. I mean, sat there, I look, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, for anybody listening, of course I've seen their content. It's fucking fantastic. Um, <laughs> listen, so I, I, I want to hear the journey, how this came to be. And more so into, yeah, you know, podcasts are supposed to be entertaining. They're engaging. But there's a lot of people out there that listen to stuff, especially we've we vilified porn. Uh, I, I'm a Christian. And my and I, I, I it's like I know that the people in the Christian community fucking judge me for what comes out of my mouth, what I talk about. And I'm like, dude, the only way to uh, avoid don't lust women is by going on a desert island with no phone. If I open up my Instagram tomorrow, I'm going to see a sports car advertisement, and that's going to get a chick on there with a low V cut and big tits out, and I'm going to like, oh, my God, I'm supposed to avoid this. So I have struggled my entire adult life um, with trying to get rid porn. I want to get rid of it. It, 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 it. It's a part of life. I get it. I uh, So it's like I know there's a lot of people out there struggle with this shit, but more so the dirty side, we're made to feel it's dirty, right? So many of us have kinks and fetishes and fa- and and fantasies that when we come to our partners, uh, I've talked about this on other podcasts. Like I've gone to uh, uh, partners of mine and said, "Hey, listen, you know, I, I I want I want you gangbang tonight." And then if you don't bring that up in the beginning of the relationship, you get somebody looking at you going, "Why didn't you tell me that to begin with? I would have never dated you. What is wrong with you?" And ultimately, oh, yeah. that doesn't uh, doesn't you know bode well. So I did a I did a um, an Instagram rant a couple of years ago because somebody tried to expose me for sexed messages that I gave to them and they got pissed at me because I stopped giving attention and he's into this he's into this and I went yeah I was uh, hands of abuse when I was younger older female cousin uh, that got me into being confused why incest from somebody older is so wrong and so hot at the same time. And I've seen everything from being a cop from all the way from gangbangs to women experimenting in bestiality to BDSM, you name it. And society is always going to say it's wrong. I get that. But as adults, the same people who are saying it's wrong are watching porn, having mistresses, or, or they're paying people for sex in the background to satisfy this lust of theirs. And we have to kind of not normalize it so much as say, listen, you're fucked up and it's okay to be fucked up. So yeah. I, I kind of want to hear individually how your guys journey started because you're, you're taking on a subject. That's probably one of the most number one research subject, which is, is incest. And on in, online, it has to be stepmother, stepfather, stepbrother, stepsisters, but we know what they're looking for. How did you guys come to terms that you were into this stuff? And then how did you come to terms with finding somebody who accepted you for it? Hmm. You kind of got a bit of a story there with that one. Yeah, I'll start. Yeah, I'll start. So, you know, for for, for me, I've always been a very sexual person. I was also um, sexually, I I, I was raped at 14 years old, and that's kind of when my hypersexuality started. So from 14, I started using very heavily in drugs and having lots of anonymous sex, tons of sex, up until probably I got pregnant at 28. (laughs) So I was like, I was like repeating like the same mistake over and over again, getting too intoxicated, getting taken advantage of. So then finally, when I sobered up off alcohol, I finally was able to like, I became a mom and I never wanted to be a mom in the first place. Right. So for now I'm doing this thing I never wanted to do. And so what happened was I also started sex work, you know, online t- content creation a couple years after, like a few years after my daughter was born. And it turned out my biggest like the internet tells you what they want from you. First of all, if you're an online content creator, they're going to tell you what they want from you. I'm not like a young 18 year old girl anymore. Immediately. Everyone started calling me mommy and mom and you're a hot mom. And Oh my God. Oh my God. So I started leaning into that. And to be completely honest, I've always had a thing for younger men ever since I was in my early twenties, I liked younger men (laughs) and it's been a constant theme of my life. So, um, I really enjoyed the dynamic of having, like just being in control. First of all, I think it has to do with being out of control as a teenager being raped. And also a few times after that, I enjoy being the person in control. So fine. If it's the mother figure, if it's, if it's like a a dom, a dominate, like a dominatrix type figure, like, and I found that through BDSM, 
lots of men come to me because they want me to be their mom or their dom. And so with that, I found a lot of like really important, just like power that I've been missing in my life personally. So that's kind of where mine started. But then what, so what's been manifesting is just through work is now people are coming to me as my, my sweet boy, like as my son. And now I've also discovered through work how prominent ancestral play is huge and how, yeah. And it doesn't bother me like at all. And I'm super into not like, we should be very careful not to kink shame people. Yeah. So not, only, yeah. So not only is incest play big, there's also lots of dirty play, pee, toilet play. It's, it's probably the biggest thing in the adult entertainment industry. That was the most shocking to me is like yeah. the people oh, the struggle, to- the struggle <laughs> yeah. that people have it. And I can picture people I know right away that like, I don't, I purposely will talk about my shit because it will weed out who I want in my life and who doesn't, you know, right? So I know that if somebody hears this podcast and they're like, wait a minute, you're, you're, you've, du- you've viewed or you've double. Yeah, I have. I don't need you in my life if you're going to fucking judge me because I know the pain that I went through in relationship after relationship of telling somebody, hey, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. And then having them look at you and look at you like you're fucking worthless, so I want people to be exposed that, yeah, you've got shame and you've got kink. You don't have to. Not everyone's going to accept you, but people do. Uh, Cody, I want. how did you – you've got a, a, a path that's kind of similar but different as well, too. I mean, you're with an older woman. You've got a fetish. How did you come to terms with whatever you went through on this? So, okay, well, I'm going to build it and then try to <laughs> – so it helps that Molly's really tall and that she's strong. So that kind of sets like, okay, I can trust this person as like a strong, big person in my life, right? But go back into my life and it's like all the people I dated always from high school forward always wanted me to be like, you know, it's the exact stereotype of what every, every guy is supposed to be like. Financially domineering, completely dominant, like – that uh-huh. alpha daddy character. It's like, you know, for a long time, like I read the books, I did all the things. I tried to be alpha. I tried to do that. But like, once I eventually became comfortable, that's just not what was really right for me. And it took meeting someone who lives in their truth very accurately and also can see me for like how I am and accept that, which like a lot of girls, they would see it and they'd be like, oh, and it turns them off and then they don't want anything to do with it. And then, you know, slow, slow decay of a relationship. But Molly kind of took it and started to run with it. And I'm not going to lie, it was not easy to even begin submitting. Like this, this was the thing at first where it's like, oh, no, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. You know, still believing the, the, the ruse that I have to be super dominant all the time. Yeah. Um, and as, that's, as that wall has just slowly come down, I've actually started, it started by being like, oh, yeah, okay, I could see me being kind of subby or kind of submissive. And then now it's gotten to the point where it's like, I can like allow other people, other guys to be that too. And like, you know, I'm the one who's kind of bringing forth that that's not a big deal to not be that. Yeah. And period. Uh, sorry. And lead, lead into like, you want equal rights and equal thing all across the board for everybody. It's like, <laughs> well, then the guys should be able to be whichever range of person that they want to be as well. Yeah. And this, then, uh, go, go continue. This is fucking awesome. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for hearing me. Yeah. Um, I think I think I'm gonna put a period in it right there. I'm not exactly sure where to go. <laughs> no, we'll continue going there. Um, what does it mean to you that that you guys are are providing an outlet for people to to find safety, pleasure, uh, even anonymously? And uh, it, as some people would, I'll, I'll always play devil's advocate. Right, we're feeding into their addiction. Is it really a bad addiction if somebody can accept what they're into? And it's not uh, like me. I'm a single guy, not married, no kids. If I have a porn addiction and I've made the conscious choice, you know, I'm really not interested in a relationship right now. It's not going to work. Is it really a bad thing that I'm exploring a kink that's going on that a society could say could fuck up my head for future relationships? Or is it just going to make me more authentic to gravitate towards people who are like-minded that I could be the realest version of me on? Yeah. So I, I want to take this yeah. real quick. So one thing that we've noticed is if, okay, you know, you have the shame, you don't want to admit that you're this kind of person, you try to hide from it. If you live there, which is kind of ungenuine and unauthentic, and you, and you want to sustain that, 
you will probably do way more fucked up shit with that under wraps. That's when people come out and they do horrible things. Yeah. But when you expose yourself to these things and you kind of say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, you overexpose, you're eventually, it's just not a big deal. Yeah. But if you don't get that exposure, you will act on that, whether it's now or in 15 years, and it will not be pretty compared to just light exposure over time. And, and I just want to say that like a lot of the time in my experience, I've done a lot um, like in real life. So a lot of the times like fantasy is always much better than the real. Oh thing. God, please talk about that. You are <laughs> yeah. so right. I, I, every time I date a woman uh, because I came from the swinging lifestyle, I was a bartender. A couple picked me up one night and you know, really gorgeous. I was 22 gorgeous woman had to be in her late forties. She's like, my husband wants you to watch me. I'm like, is he going to kill me? How does this work? I didn't know. And I didn't know about it. And I started going down that path. And, um, I, and, and uh, 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 oh, crap. What did you just say? Because you got such a fucking... Oh, yeah. So as I got older, I could never understand why men were into this shit. So this, the, I was talking to the guy one night. I'm like, how do you enjoy me with your spouse? And he goes, you are giving her pleasure. And from a third person point of view, like a movie, I get to watch it. And it is the greatest thing in the world watching the object of my affection. Get that. So I said, great. So anytime I talk to a girl who's interested in dating me, I'll say off the bat, hey, listen, um, cards on the table. This is stuff that I'm into. And if you're not into this, like if you're not open to it, you are not going to work because I've tried to be vanilla. I've tried to, it just never works. And, And I keep explaining, but don't think that it's going to happen as easily as you think it would or as often. Because if I say, listen, I want to watch five guys go go on you like crazy tonight, it's like, do you know how hard it is to find five who are <laughs> visually attractive, can keep their mouths fucking shut, who are clean, who are, it is almost, who isn't going to try to backstab me, you know, later on down. It's unbelievably, and it's a mess. So, and who can all keep their dick hard at the same time? 100%. 100%. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, talk about that. Penetration, it is so difficult to have both guys have their penises hard, especially if you're using condoms. It's almost impossible. So I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the time, like, so so porn teaches us, like, not to, not to fucking, you know, shit on porn or anything, but there's a lot of it that, like, you know, they're professionals and they are on a shoot and they have certain ways of make, keeping their dicks hard and fluffers and this or that. And, like, it's not always like that. And, but porn is good for that. Porn does show you all the different possibilities that are out there, all these different fantasies that you get to now live inside the porn, right? Which I think is a good outlet for a lot of people who have different fetishes and kinks and taboo kinks. And so, but then when you actually put it into practice in real life, just don't be shocked when it turns out that you don't like watching your partner get fucked by five guys. I don't be shocked. If you don't want to be treated like a, <laughs> like a little child by your mom. Like, just don't be surprised that it doesn't work out because like, it's okay. And maybe it's just not going to work out with that one person, but maybe you have a different experience with another person in a safer environment at a dungeon and BDSM play kink, you know, like, and like a really safe person that knows what they're doing. Like, like a mommy, like a real mommy who can actually guide you in your experience. Cause she pays attention to what you're wanting out of the experience. Like what I do for him. I pay attention very close. I'm also a mentalist in uh, for BDSM. So I get a lot of background on what, where he comes from, what his family is like, who he is as a person, all the different relationships he's had in his life. And I combine that into like sessions that we have together. And also I I implement a lot of this into our content. So it's like, there's a lot, there's a lot of like ways of doing just really, really important work through porn. And a lot of it is not very, (laughs) just not very, it's just just not very screamtious. Like it's just So there's, there, I want to, I want to build on that for a second because you're actually addressing an issue. And I want to go back to one too. I, I made a, I did one of those things on TikTok where people like say an unpopular opinion that people are going to hate. And I went, uh, having two girls at once is, is fun. It's not, you don't get the views you get. It's like usually one girl's drunk or they're both drunk. They wind up hating each other. One gets pissed that she made you come. The other one did. Oh, it's a fucking mess. But yeah, a lot of fucking drama, but you're, so I want to ask a question, right? Because I can't tell you how many people, women will say porn isn't real. It's not real. Women, are they being forced to have sex like that? So are you kind of saying that some women, they like that kind of sex that they see in porn? Are you suggesting that? And what you're doing, what you just said, is you're bringing the reality into visual, and you're just posting it for content. So is porn real or is it fake? Um, I'd say it's all very real. I've, I've been to actual porn sets. My One of my boyfriends um, in my early 20s was a cinematographer for porn, and I got to go to a couple sets, and it was fun. 
oh, these girls are having a fucking blast. And they're talking about how much they like to get fucked out and they're going to get their fuck. And they're like, what one girl came up to me. She's like, you can't wait to watch me get fucked. And then you and your boyfriend are going to go fuck about it later. And I was like, oh. I remember being like, I want to do this one day. But, but back then I wasn't comfortable being on a porn agency. And then as soon as OnlyFans started, I was like, fuck yeah. Like I, I've always wanted to be a porn star because the girls I witnessed were having a great fucking time. And they were honestly the ones in control of the whole thing. And I thought that was really cool. But I, you know, but I have also worked with a lot of other content creators for OnlyFans. And I myself have been in situations that weren't very good for me. And I did it anyway for the content. You know, fuck some guys I didn't want to fuck. Um, did fuck some girls I didn't want to fuck you know, they smelled weird and I was like fucking grossed out, but I did it anyway. And I was just like, so, so, so there's a bunch of things I've done that I did not want to do. So yeah, but there's also a bunch of, por- most of my porn is definitely hundred percent what I want to do. So it's a, it's a mixed bag. Cody, when you're, we're guys, right? Physical pleasure, this and that. Are, are you getting, what are you getting out of it aside from just, you know, getting off? What emotion, <laughs> what emotional content are you getting from, or if any, have you put any thought into that? Yeah, you're contributing to fantasies. You're helping control the narrative. You get to get off. I mean, does it ever, does it ever, does it ever like really put a notch in your ego? Like men want my significant other. And oh, you- yeah, I mean, in the beginning, like a year ago, okay, this is where like exposure has changed my opinion over time. <laughs> Cause in the beginning, it's like, dude, I, I have seen, the the reality of what men are and that's a very rare experience for men to see so i get to see everything that everybody texts molly i get to see the reality of how how what they want what they think what they're thinking about and i'm like oh my god this has changed my perspective of all men but at first oh my god dude i like I had to be in a different room i could i, I was doing messages at some time i stopped doing messages yeah he doesn't I, do messages anymore it's it's really tough to well for like even being in a relationship before this it's like you know guys looking at your girl and stuff starts to get you might not feel the way because you have the desires that you have then but when you're 22 you were like is this guy gonna fucking kill me for trying to be a part of that it's like i can sympathize with that thought because like i i get that jealous yeah. given the situation but over time it's like i'm starting to just not give a fuck like yeah. it's really not that big a deal how did, you, how did you how did you come to that part because most women if if we give off that type of energy, right? Where you know, Molly, women choose choose us, right? Men hunt, women choose. So we hunt. You you know, Molly sits there says, "I choose you." If you get to the point where you're always jealous of this and that, biologically and imprintly, the woman's gonna go, "All right, I'm not fucking turned on anymore. I'm going somewhere else." How did you? How are you dealing with that? Where you're like, dude, your inbox is full. Guys are doing this, blah blah blah. I've got her. I don't have a fucking thing to worry about. How did you come to that point? I'm glad you actually mentioned this. I think I figured it out literally two days ago. <laughs> I think I actually fuck as much as a woman has capability to fuck. <laughs> so my mind is more like a woman's now where I can see on that spectrum of like what it is. And so it doesn't bother me the same as when sex was more of a competition. You know? Oh, wow. Okay. Now you're getting everything. Now, now you're getting all the different things that you need sexually. Yeah. Right? So I, I'm like, you know, when you look at women, it's like women can have anybody at any moment, guys, you know, good luck in three months, you know? Right. Well, so there's a question too for Molly for going on that. Do you ever, cause you're playing the mother role. Do you ever have to offer reassurance and say, listen, yeah, my inbox is flooded with dick pics nonstop. It's an act for most of the time that I have to do this. It's intimacy with you. Um, do you after, do you have to, because a lot of women hate this, a lot of women hate bringing reassurance into men because most of us men are supposed to be the alpha male that we don't show any vulnerability. So if we say, hey, can you offer vulnerability or offer reassurance? What's wrong with you? Are you weak? Do you offer yeah. that? Are you okay with that? And then has that made it more solid for you guys? That, that actually does come up a lot. And um, it's certain times of the month when I'm, it's linked to my period, <laughs> honestly. So, so like this time of the month, maybe this last week, I get super turned off by like having to be mom. I'm like, I'm not mom. Fuck you. You be the fucking man for once. Fucking like, I, I always feel like I'm in control of everything, but the fucking, and, and like, and, and a lot of the content we make where it has to be for another man, if I'm trying to use his dick for it, he gets soft because he doesn't like the fact that I'm making it for someone else sometimes. So then I have to reassure him that it's, yeah. just, you know, it is for work. It is for this. It is for that. And yeah, sometimes it does turn me off, but it is linked to my cycle for three weeks out of the month. I'm totally fine with doing it. But for maybe one or two weeks, sometimes I'm not. So it's What's like the, a constant 
thought cycle. Yeah. What is the intimacy like? And that's going to be, it's, I'm really asking a question behind the scenes there. Right. Um, do you ever get like tired of a uh, uh, talking shop, right? You're at home. Cause it, I, I mean, I could picture if you guys are gym life, if you're both trainers and competitors and you get home and you're like, well, what do we do outside of talking about the gym life and competing? Is it the kind of the same thing? Do you guys ever turn the camera off and there is intimacy and bonding and he, do you ever have to heal from, yeah, maybe there's a big session, do making videos, content, whatever. And then it's just gotta be the two of you and your energy. Honestly, in order for me to enjoy sex, I have to go somewhere. Again, like I said before, I'm a mentalist and I have to have some sort of dynamic in the actual session, even when it's just between us. I need there to be some scenario where there's someone else involved or like I've been filled up by another man or he's fucking another girl with me. Like they're for me to get off this. I, I found this out when I was 14 or 16 years old and my boyfriend dumped me for someone else. And I fucking feverishly masturbated about him being with her. And it pit, I was crying and I was like, why is this turning me off? So I'm, I, I'm a cuck. So I, I need there to be someone else. No, no, you're not. You're in control. Holy I'm shit. Control, you're right? in control. I'm going to tell you why the same thing. It, it, it has always been every every time a relationship was ending, that's exactly what I would do is I would be going this. You, you use the same word feverishly masturbating because you think of the other guy pounding the shit out of your girlfriend. There's still residual. <laughs> there's still residual intimacy and there's attraction to it. And uh, what, uh, uh, Cody, I don't know if you have this experience or not. I have the same thing. If I'm dating a woman, she knows. That it'll be the same. You could be dating for five months or whatever. Now, tell me that story about how that guy fucked you that time. It has to be the same thing because in my mind, it's yeah, we're there in the moment. It's bonding, but that person has to become my visual porn. So yeah. that is something. I don't. I, that is so ironic that I heard a female say that because normally that's a man, masculine type energy for that. Oh, interesting. Well, because. Wait, can I share? Yeah, go ahead. Only recently has he actually been looking me up, like, you know, because I've been doing content maybe a year and a half longer than, than him and I. So he has been looking at me with other people that I've worked with. And he's like, yeah, 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 I've been getting off to it. Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah, it pisses me off. I, I get it, though. It's, and then in order there, for him to weird... come now, he almost has to know that I've been with, like, another person before fucking him right now. So he's turning more into that. It's yeah. intimacy. Yeah. People don't get that that's extremely intimate. And it's yeah. not, like, I'm, I'm in the hot wife lifestyle. So cuckold, for the listeners who don't know it, the, the cuckold is, you know, there's a little bit of shaming to it. The guy's kind of like a, a beta, if you will. I like if I date a woman, because I'm also getting older. I'm 47, fucking tired. I work so much, this and that. I like it when a woman goes, hey, do I have permission to go out tonight? Yeah, you do. I want you to come home. This is what you better be filled with. This is what you better be wearing. I better hear all about it. And a lot of women can't understand that. It's like, why are you good with sharing? It's like, no, it's yeah. not what it is. It's you are the object of my affection and I'm allowing other people to enjoy that. I can't explain, or it took me a long time to say, you're fucked up, dude. You're so yeah. fucked until I started seeing how many men love that stuff, but it's a what masculine it, what, energy. What that actually does. I mean, I, I, there's a big part about this on at sex and at dawn. It's a book about like, open relationships and polyamory and maybe where, where it comes from, but like a lot of monogamous relationships, right? They get stale. The fire, like the, the attraction to your partner fades. So when you add another person into it, for example, even, even fantasy wise, your partner is now being desired by somebody else, which now makes them more desirable immediately. Because now this person that's just always there and always in your face and no one else wants them or you're like, you're just getting bored of them. But now all these people want your partner and that's hot. It's competition. <laughs> it's competition. Yeah. Uh, a question for you. So when you say, yes, you can go do that. That's totally fine. Do you ever set, not like parameters as in this is what you shouldn't do, but like, this is what I want to see. 100%. So I have, I have like rules, right? There's no kissing unless we agree upon it. Um, <laughs> unless I specifically, you have to, you have to ask permission, but no, no cream pies unless I suggest it um, <laughs> or you ask for it. And and it, it will be, this is what I want you to wear. So I love when a woman submits to me, but I want her dominating other men. Because uh -huh. that's where I get the shit where I, I, I have to relive my youth of being the 20-something-year-old guy that was a plaything for a 47-year-old woman. I can't get that anymore. I don't want to date a 70-year-old woman who's going to do that, right? But now I get to <laughs> vicariously live through the younger guys of that pleasure that I went through because it was intimate. It was intimate. so intimate, right? And so, uh, but my problem is, and it's not a problem, it's you get permission to do this and I go extreme as possible. If one of those things is either 
left out. There's a, there's a reason for a lot of things. But if I'm not like if I'm disrespected in any way whatsoever, that's it. That's it. You cannot recover from that, especially if I'm giving my consent for somebody to enjoy when I'm not even there. It's like that's the ultimate. Like I, I cut people off immediately if I, well I couldn't get video. Done. For sure. Oh, done. It, has yeah. to, it has to be done, right? Or so, I, yeah. So so I translate that into uh, like it's two things. It's respect, right? Because the relationship doesn't end because you're going to go do some shit. Like you still respect your partner and 100%. it's consideration. So if any shit like that's to happen, yeah. it's like I'm still in their head. I'm I'm being considered in the moment. I yeah. want them to have their experience, but they're also considerate of like my feelings. Yeah. Joe, one hundred percent. It it does that. I say like a lot of women don't get like my psychology for the like the the gangbang, if you will, is you just want to see me used. I want to see you in control of five other men who you drain them. They're obsessed with you. They leave. Then I take you to the shower, clean you off, and you and I are intimate with each other. Because you are, you've just made me proud to a level of whatever. Uh, I watched you grin at me, you know, with those eyes on fire while people were just, you know, marking you like crazy. And there was a respect factor. The, uh, for me, it's always been the biggest threat to another relationship for as far as a guy goes is another guy. Well, if I'm saying, hey, I'm good with that, not, you know, you want, it's like, no, I want it and you're exploring it. Number one, I'm still in control. So there's no insecurity, right? And number two, it's, yeah, the second that you could say, okay, he's letting me go explore this and I'm going to go, I'm going to, no, you know, I tell him I'm going to go this way. I'm not going to, I'm not going to call him for three hours, right? Then there's that little bit of disrespect. How can I ever trust somebody again if I'm allowing the biggest thing in the door? So yeah, it's, it's re respect my feelings and uh, show respect because I'm going to let you do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, the fact that, you know, for, for, for me, like I, I, I used to call myself polyamorous, but I, I'm, I'd say I'm more monogamish. I like to be more monogamous, but I also like the freedom to, to express myself in, what, in, in however I want, like around other men, not feel scared to talk to another guy, this or that. But even just having that freedom, like within our relationship saying like, yes, it's okay if you flirt with other people. It's okay if you cuddle with our friends. It's okay. Like that's, a, that's the freedom that I need to feel comfortable with my partner. Cause when it, if it feels too restrictive, like you can't do this, you can't do that. Like uh, you can't even look at other guys. It, it makes me immediately like very unattracted to my partner. Well, that's it, physical it, only. Go ahead, Cody. I want to hear your response to that. I mean, number one, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 26. So you're 26 Jeez. and you are this advanced and secure in your masculinity. <laughs> no, it's it's huge. At 26, I was not even remotely close to where you're at this level. So yeah. how are you, how how do you uh, like deal with that? Well, I mean, you know, not everyone's going to get this lucky, but Molly lives in a lot of truth. And so when you come in to be in a relationship with someone who is just no fucking bullshit, Everything is truthful. And if you think you can get away with a lie, you can't. <laughs> um, and and like you cut all the bullshit out of your life. And it's a lot easier because also the foundation for what this is, is right there. If you step outside of it, you know what that is. You fuck up, you know what that is. You know what you can expect of her and what you can expect of me. So, you know, truth, like being really fucking truthful communication, but like hard truths, hard like, truths. Babe, I want so to games. Fuck. I want to fuck. I want to fuck other people. I want to yeah. fuck. I want to fuck one of our friends. Like I've said that to him, and yeah. he's just like, <gasps> Yeah, it fucking, oh my it God. fucking hurts. Yeah. But the thing is, is like she can fuck my whole world up for like five days. But like, okay, here I'll give you a great example. Uh, we broke up once early on. Um, she's like, Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go fuck other people. And it's like, you know, at first, like, fuck, like you know, you know, you don't want that. But what I realized is like three, four, five days later. I didn't have to question if she was going to or not. And I didn't live in a perpetual state of, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. I knew what the fuck was going to happen. So I knew <laughs> how to live my life accordingly. And then it didn't bother me. Does it bond you guys more? For sure. Yeah. It's yes. trust. Yes. The more you're, the more you're brutally brutally honest. Can be fucking brutally on, like that's the key, not just honesty, but like the, like the most brutal, you know, like I want you to get fucked by multiple men. Uh, like to, to be able to have that within yourself and be able to communicate that to all these like potential partners. Like you're right. That, that is how you're going to weed out people that are not good for you. Yeah. And when you, and then when you operate on a lie, you're only going to draw in other people who operate within your lie. So now you're going to draw in people who are not in alignment with who you are at all. And you're going to be living in some weird fake world that you don't want to live in. So do you like, feel, do you ever pull the power, right? 
you're older, you're the female. Uh, a lot of times you're in your masculine. Do you ever go out, do what you're going to do, come home, and just don't tell them about it on <laughs> purpose? Well, because you, 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 you know how th there are women that do that, that all of a sudden yeah. now you're now you're completely abusing the relationship. You are mentally abusing, and it's leverage. That That's grounds for done right there for me. But you yeah. don't do good. You don't do that. I've met, like, our, actually someone in our uh, friend group, like, we kind of just discovered that she was like that, and, um, yeah, it was really, uh, for me, too, I was like, I don't want to be friends with this person anymore. Yeah. You don't you don't get to treat people like that and walk all over people and dominate people just because they're... We have a really small threshold for bullshit and people who are into lying and conniving, like, even even wanting to help people, it's like, we, we can't even do that anymore. Honestly, people who also tell me that they're not into, um, like, it, it, like, if they say they don't have any kinks or fetishes, even... You know, I think you're lying. I'm like, you're a fucking liar. I'm like, I don't want to be your friend because you don't even know. Because you're just lying to yourself at that point. Because <laughs> if you do believe that, yeah, then I don't, I don't see the point in getting to know someone like that. You 100%. Know? Have you, how is the, uh, how's the interaction with people? I, what is it? Because you and I talked a little bit before we did this. We talked about how there are men that, that will talk to you about their past. And Cody, I don't know if you've ever had other men who say, dude, I, I went through this. Like, number one, I had like a, legitimate real experience i don't know if anybody has ever had that where they're like hey i did this and blah blah blah. do people confide in you and find catharsis by connecting with you guys or it becomes more than just getting off oh yeah people tell us everything i mean that's that's what makes OnlyFans so special because there's 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 enough porn that already exists in the world to just we don't have to make any more porn right so like OnlyFans is now allowing people to to talk to the porn star which is why it's so important and so valuable is because you actually get to come to the person that makes the porn that you resonate with. And now you get to ask questions about why you do this. And can I tell you my story about like, I was touched when I was young by an older woman and she, my babysitter took advantage of me or my mom did this or called me a piece of shit my whole life. And, the, and that's the shit that I just like, I read it and I'm just like, that's what gets me off. Like that's sex to me is when people confide that's in intimate, me. That's like, unbelievable intimacy. Oh. How do you guys handle it? And uh, how do you handle people who now they're going to find intimacy with you? Have you guys run into that problem yet where somebody's like, okay, I want you guys because you're the only people in the world I could trust with this now? Um, there's been a few, but they're really, so th they actually called it. So there's the people admit that they just want relationships with porn. I forgot what it's called. I don't know if you know the, the no. terminology. No. But the, the new thing where people are now choosing pornography relationships over real life relationships. And one of my fans told me about this. And I think a lot, quite a few now have also confided to me that that's what they're doing. So I'm yeah. like, fuck yeah, as long as you understand that this is just a porn star and like, yes, I, 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 I do cherish our conversations. And yes, I love talking about the stuff that we do, but that's what it is. And a lot of these men do understand that that's what it is, but they prefer it over it, the real life intimacy, which is interesting. Much less messy. Cody, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. Less expensive, less messy. Yeah. Way more to the point, a lot less bullshit. You don't have to go introduce yourself to people. It's like, it is a straight to the point thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and and they and they get to hide behind the computer. So you get to be more honest about what the fuck you're into and what happened to yeah. you as a kid. Because no one gets to talk about what happened to them as a kid without feeling scared. And like their families may have swept it under the rug or their friends think it's fucking weird and don't know how to hold space for them. And it's like, I love being that for people. I yeah, love being people honest. either go, they shut down and you admitted it. You either shut down or you go hypersexual when that happens. Yes, yes. You know, I went hypersexual. It was ridiculous. And I did it, it. It just ruined who I was until I'm like, all right, I fucking like this stuff, whatever. And then you, you, you learn to, uh, you learn to kind of compartmentalize so that you're yeah. not projecting it onto the wrong people. Um, how everyone's has everyone fetish? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, go Every, ahead. Everyone's fetishes and kinks are brought on by some sort of trauma, trauma. that they've experienced, and we need to all just admit that trauma is just part of the human experience, and it's okay that it's developed your sexual urges. You just need to find a way to communicate it to your partners better because a lot of people don't know how to tell their partner that, that what they're into. And then that secret just builds and builds and builds until they do something stupid with it. And it's like, so you, you need an outlet. Maybe it is only fans. Maybe it is porn, but it'd be nice if you could talk to your partner about it. In my opinion, Cody, do you find other men will obviously leverage you to get to her, have conversations with you. Um, and then do they, do they, you know, the post nut clarity comes all of a sudden they switch and they become assholes, this and that. Are you learning more about our species as men and how to mentor men better 
as time goes on, because there are going to be guys that are like, listen, I'm fucked up. You know, I, 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 like I said, I told Molly in the beginning when she told me, I'm like, I want to have him on because I want that male perspective. But there's a lot of guys who, you know, they want to get their dick wet. That's about it. And they're going to wind up being just the same pieces of shit that they would out in the real world. Are you losing faith in the humanity of men or are you seeing a better way to navigate to kind of help coach people? Good question. Um, there's a couple ways to tackle this. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a, a methodology, which would be if they just stopped caring about sex so much, they'd fuck a lot more because it just translates so quickly. And it's just like, it's a huge turnoff. But when you let it go, it's like, dude, girls are horny as fuck. They want that. Um, second thing is, yeah, my, my DMs are always full of like people who are like, just, you know, Hey, and I was like, Oh, Hey, what's up, man. And it's like, you and Molly uh, open. And it's like, fuck, <laughs> like, fuck you guys. <laughs> like, it's so annoying. You know? Um, well, if you're this I, comfortable, I lo lo lost faith in them. I just think that I just wish that they all had a Molly, honestly. Mm. And I well, you've got a responsibility a lot, and she's given me a lot of space to explore all kinds of things. Do you think you, you could see yourself helping men uh, cultivate the relationship that you would want? Meaning that if they don't have this... They respect her as much as I... I think we're breaking up a little bit. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Great. Now it's catching up again. Okay, great. Uh, Cody, do you think that you could find a path or would be a good path that you, you, you got blessed, you got a partner who understands and is unbelievably communicative, which is phenomenal. Do you think that you might find a niche in teaching men, well, you don't have what I have, let me teach you how to create this by leading partners? Because if you're going to be an alpha, you're going to do all this machismo shit, which I, I'm an alpha, but I also love the sensitive sides of shit. Could you teach men Hey, this is how to bring this to your partner without shame. This is how to bring this to a woman and say, hey, listen, I want daddy-daughter role play. I want mother-son role play. I want brother-sister role play. I want this. Could you see yourself kind of navigating off that? Yeah, I think I have a lot to teach. I just don't know. I guess I haven't really given myself the confidence to teach that. And I haven't had enough men come to me asking about it to feel like I'm all that interesting. Mm. Oh, no, I, 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 I think I want you and I doing some podcasts together because there's a lot of shit I could ask you. Um, yeah. All right, let's talk about some problems and then talk about some solutions. Again, if people want to do support you, they can go to OnlyFans.com slash Vibe with Mommy. It's uh, Molly and uh, Cody. Um, what do you guys see for the future? What do you got, What are you guys' plans, I don't know, the next uh, six months as far as content, fun, uh, fans? What, do you, what, what are your plans? It. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, we just keep planning to our, our content just keeps getting better and better. And, and what we're doing now is like we're, we, we offer this kind of deal for customs. So now we have our fans kind of telling us what they want to see. And now we make it for them. And now it's kind of changed the game for us because yeah. there's a certain type of man, like person that is looking for the content that we make. Right. So now we're having them tell us what that is exactly all these different scenarios. And they all kind of fit into a similar box. So I think we're, we're just continuing on with the stepmom stepson dynamic, like mainly focused on that. And our, I, I mean, our only fans has gone up substantially since yeah. we've just been only focusing yeah. on that dynamic. We, we don't really have to for right now. We've kind of, there's, there's certain things you do want to worry about and there's, and if you don't have to worry about it, don't worry about it. But the people who are coming forth and telling us what they want us to make, it's like, they fucking know they're they the are. archetype of yeah. what they want to see. And so we've realized like we can be creative and we can do shit that we want to do. But we're not them, and we don't know how to translate to them. So we take yeah. what they want and then add our flavor on it, and then we give it to them. Yeah. Also, I'd really like to – we're trying to work with a couple of people to get a filmer that I'm comfortable with. and Get his dick hard. Yeah. Right, stay it's up. super yeah. hard to stay up with people in the room. You yeah. Know, focus on too much shit. But I would love to get a filmer so we could get more crazy cinematography going. Yeah, yeah it's, it blows me away. I keep thinking about it because, like I said, when porn was really – when the internet came out and whatnot, you had very few people – like Rachel Steele – was a big one. Redmilf.com was one of the only people who was doing this content years ago. And, you know, you'd get a clip and that clip would have to last you two, three years because it, <laughs> it just blows me away how there's so many people would say that we're, you know, we're especially the faith driven people. Cause I know if anybody ever listened to this content who knew from that, they would be condemning the shit out of it, but they're the biggest hypocrites in the fucking world. Um, it's, yeah. it's coming to accept it 
but then bringing it inside of a healthy relationship that you guys are really offering to that. So I'm wondering, like, there's got to be, I think especially for you, Cody, there's got to be uh, uh, some kind of a, a path where you could take to help mentor other men to to cultivate this stuff while maintaining the bounds of respects and whatnot. Um, man, I could talk to you guys all day on this. All right, tell everybody again, uh, they're, they're, they're only OnlyFans. Uh, what, if, if you could share one thing, right? Let's talk, let's, no, we'll end with this. Both of you, I, I like each separate answers. If you could share one thing about if you're starting from the beginning and you had to accept a kink of yours and then bring that to a partner, how would you do that? <sighs> Damn, that's such a tough question. I got it. it. Yeah, just be brutally honest. And depending on their reaction, just take it and go on. Like my, my buddy recently texted me. He's like, dude, this thing that you said has changed my life forever. And I was like, what was it? And he's like, yeah, dude, I was like, I scared, I was scared that I, I, he was saying he was scared that he, you know, scared off this girl. And all I said was good. And he was like, that fucking changed my perspective on rejection. It's like, if, if you're yourself and people don't vibe with it, they don't need to be in your fucking life. No matter as much as you want them, if you're operating from, I want to fuck people, then yeah, anytime you don't get to fuck, then you've lost, but that's not who you are. You want to be who you are. And then the people you want will come forth and you can do whatever you want. But like weed people out who aren't yours. Like it's, it's the biggest waste of time. Mm -hmm in everything. I, I, I would also, you know, I, depending on who your partner is and, and where you come from and your family, I would definitely start talking about what you're into. Maybe not directly right away. Say, Hey, I watched this porn the other day and I liked it and I thought it was cool. Maybe we could watch it together. I'm going to get, I, I want to see how you feel about it. You know, like maybe just get, because, because these things, these kinks and fetishes that we have, they come from a very sensitive place. And if you're giving this information to the wrong person, they could use it against you in yeah. a very terrible way, which I've seen multiple occasions through fans. And, and I do warn against being super brutally honest sometimes, yeah. especially yeah. if your family is super conservative, religious, yeah. you know, if you come from any, anything like that, where they could just like nix you out of the family. Like, I don't know. I, How you know, do you, do you, Cause that, that did happen to me and I don't give a fuck. Right. Cause when that yeah, person so, put up, yeah. when that person put up the text message, like, Oh my God, you sent this person this. I went, yeah. So what? I'm not married, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I, not, but not everybody shares that. I, well, I'm that's right. So I want to yeah. know how do you guys there, if you don't have confidence in the things that you're into and it does suck when people put you, when you get burned as much in life and you have a, I don't give a fuck attitude, it's really not a good place to be. It's, yeah. it's, it's horrible, but how do we balance? Hey, I'm into this kind of fetish. This is who I am. I want you to accept me. If not, I understand that. How do yeah. people come to that place? You know, for, for me, witnessing people at a dungeon, for example, at a BDSM dungeon or at a kink party was the first time I saw people living in their truth as animals, as little as littles, as daddies and mommies. Seeing other people for me gave me permission to be that myself. So yeah. for me, it took being in an environment where everyone is living very much in their truth. Mm -hmm totally no shame or like no one's there fucking shaming everyone for doing what they're doing unless they want it unless they want right. to be degraded yeah. but like when i first when i saw it for the first time i was like fuck yeah i'm like so for me it was like it took going to an actual party to get comfortable with who i am i don't know if people have that access to these things like i don't know if that's even possible for most people cody you your know? thoughts i think she's right if you can if you can expose your partner to showing them that this is not actually that absurd yeah. by, you know, other people doing far more absurd things <laughs> yeah. in person, you, you might start to consider it. You know, yeah. I know that I've uh, started coming to Molly with like new things that might scare her, but she's starting, but like after introducing the idea, very scary point, she started to actually build it into what gets her off. And so it seems to be taking shape, but it also takes time. Like, don't, don't also expect, don't expect a result immediately. Like this, this shit's going to suck. You got to, it's going to be weeks, if not months for this shit. To and a lot of people are closed minded and it's really unfortunate. It's really hard to un, unclose someone's mind. How, like how, that, that is a bigger question that I'm also struggling with. And it's, it, I don't have an answer for that person. Well, you're, you're always in control and you're the alpha and you, you know, you're dating a man who's younger <laughs> than you for that sake. Do you ever though, but do you ever, he's, he's your sweet boy. Uh, in, in a role play, he's your sweet boy at home with your intimacy. But a man like me comes along and then starts to show him disrespect. Do you ever, no, 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 
that's my man. Do you ever have that type of uh, uh, reaction that comes up when you especially have other, like do other men, do other men just arbitrarily assume that they could walk all over him because he's your sweet boy? Actually, actually, oh actually a good friend of ours, oh a good friend of ours, I was at a party without Cody this time. And he asked me if he could do this thing to me, right? It was kind of like a kiss or something. And I told, and I, and, and I'd asked him before, I had asked Cody before at a previous party if that was okay. And Cody said, no. So this guy asked me again when Cody wasn't there. So I looked at him, I was like, he wasn't cool with that then at the other party and he's not here now. So I can't ask him. So no, the answer is no again. So I, I made sure to like rail it in. Hell no, dude. What the fuck? Are you dude, kidding me? Right. But, but, but also made that other man respect me even more. I made and, everybody in the room respect And me. all the people in the room were like, be, be, because these people are polyamorous, right? Super open, like tribe mentality. And they were all just like, <gasps> like, good for you, dude. Like, act, like, fuck yeah. Cody, how do you do, Cody, how do you deal with that? You're, you're a good, you're a good man. You've got a very good, even keel energy. It doesn't say, it doesn't seem like you'd rock the boat, but how do you deal with that? If somebody is, is coming up because men are assholes, you know, you go I mean, somewhere and they disrespect you. How would you, how do you deal with that? I mean, my mind immediately goes to the worst, worst place. I'm not going to act like I don't do that, but I do like this guy. And what I do is I'm patient. I pay attention to people over a long per period of time. Like I pay attention to this guy. I try to see what his game is. And it's, it's, we're not special within this case. It's like, he literally tries to do this. He does this with everybody. Yeah. So it's not a special thing. And it's like, Molly's his great white Buffalo. And <laughs> as long, as long as we have a great white Buffalo, he's going to keep upping his ante, which means hooking me up <laughs> and us up. And it's just getting better. Like I'm going to be a general manager of a business I can't define right now because of that. So it's like, it's okay. You should tell them though, how, when we were more poly, the kind of shit that was happening all the fucking time. Oh yeah. When we, so when we first started dating, we were open, we, we were polyamorous and he was dating two of my girlfriends, by the way. So there's three girls, two older women and him, by the way, <laughs> and he was navigating all of us at the same time. And that shit blew the fuck up. I, I kind of failed that semester of college. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that's exactly why I'm in that hot wife lifestyle where it's like, I don't need other women. You just do things with other men. That's why I just, everyone, just, you want me with other men so I can be with other women? I'm like, no, I don't need fucking other women in my life because they're all nuts. I'm good with the visual of you. Yeah. Dude, you're, like, you're like the male version you're, of her. You're, you're definitely like the male version of me, dude. Like, as soon as, like, things you say on your Instagram, I'm like, dude, he gets it. Like, you really do. You understand it. And, and it's really it's really badass that you are who you are. I appreciate and, like, that. You are an alpha, you're an alpha dude, but with, like, lots of maturity. And um, what is it? Like, uh just that you're, you're, you're like above the way, like, the way that I think about it is this, right? Because I remember it. Um, elevator. I remember that when I was in the lifestyle, I was the single male and single males were, it was invite only, right? Everyone's trying to get the unicorn women. And uh, I remember when I started to experiment in the lifestyle a little bit with the person I was dating, it was, I was still young. I was in my early twenties. And when we would go out, all the men in their forties and fifties would act like I wasn't fucking there. And, uh, and I was a cop at this point, and I was like, now you are test." And the girls I was with would never know how to handle that. I remember getting an argument one day going, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing you to do this stuff. I, it's, it's a lose-lose for me. Because if I step in and I go, gents, she's with me, I'm the asshole now because you're like, you said I could do this. And it, but if you don't step up and say, hey, you know what? I have to go check with Dominic first. Then... I'm the asshole for allowing you to do that. So the way that I started to progress is I would never treat we another may have male. lost you. We're glitching out right now. Okay, I can, I'll, they can hear, but we'll get back in a second. But the point I'm being is, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, for those who are listening on the aspect of it, the, uh, the point was is that I had to find uh, comfortability with myself in there. Oh, I think we lost them on that. We did. All right, we'll finish this up and um, we'll end this podcast on this. And uh, yeah, with the technical difficulties on there. That was that. That was a very, very, very dynamic podcast. It was fantastic. Uh, see you guys on the next episode of this. Uh, that was probably the most intimate, intense podcast we've had so far, but we'll have those guys back on soon. <laughs>